and welcome to my YouTube video. My name is Suzanne Bryan and I'm a TKGA Certified Master Hand Knitter. In this video I'm going to show you how to use Ann Bud's book, The Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters, for starting a raglan cardigan. This is in association with a knit along that I'm doing. It's called It Takes a Guild Cardigan Tutorial or ITAG. I do have Ann Bud's permission and Interweave Knits permission, uh, I mean Interweave Press's permission to use her book in my videos and in the tutorial. So we're going to go to page 75, which is where the um, Ragland sweater is described. This is the schematics that go with it. I'm going to choose size 40 with a stitch gauge of five stitches to the inch. Actually, I'm going to choose a size 38. Five stitches to the inch, so I'm going to, it tells me that I need to cast on 46 stitches. And I have done that. I have my 46 stitches here. Then the very next uh, direction says, do not join rows, beginner, and in center front. Now, a really good clue, whenever you see rows, it means you're going to be knitting back and forth flat. If you see the word rounds, that means you're going to be knitting around in a circle, all in one piece. I mean around and around. This is still in one piece, but we're knitting back and forth. Set up row. With wrong side facing, purl one row and at the same time place markers after the first stitch to denote the right front. Then place an additional marker after the following number of stitches to denote the right sleeve. And it says six. So I actually move ahead a little bit on that and I place the markers right in the beginning. I like to use these bulb pins for this situation. So we would have the purl side facing us and it says place a marker after the first purl stitch. So rather than purling, I'm just putting the markers on because when I purl the first row, I'm going to do the setup for our cables too and I'll show you how to do that. So Place a marker after the first stitch to denote the right front. So this is the right front raglan. Then it says work six stitches. We're just going to move six stitches. Two, four, six, and we're going to place our next marker. And this is for the right sleeve. So this designates the right sleeve. Then we go to the next page, page 76, and over here it says then place an additional marker after the following number of stitches to denote the back, 32. So then we'll count over 32 stitches, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, and we're going to place a marker there. And then it says, then place an additional marker after the following number of stitches to denote the left sleeve. And it's six. So we're going to count six, two, four, six, and that leaves us one stitch left over. And that is correct. Then we're going to work this first row because we're going to do a setup for our cables in here and in this section here. This is the right sleeve, the left sleeve, this is the back, this is the right front center stitch, this is the left front center stitch, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we're going to go to the sleeve cable that I plan to use. This is on page 17 of my tutorial. I'm going to use sleeve cable C and it requires one, two, three, four, five, six stitches between the markers. And I have six. And I'm going to per I'm going to do that. We're on a wrong side row, so this will be a knit because it's a, a pearl on the right side. So I'm going to knit. And then I'm going to pearl front and back, pearl front and back, pearl front and back, pearl front and back, and knit. And that will actually give me, I will end up with ten stitches whereas I started with six. So here we go. I'm going to purl the first stitch. Now I'm a continental knitter. It doesn't really matter about the style of knitting for this. It's how you're placing the markers 
and working us doing the setup for the cables and working the increases and we're going to go through all of that so here we go now we're on the sleeve I just did that right front center and I'm going to knit and then I'm going to purl front and back one two three four times one two now I made another video just showing putting a cable on the back but I don't think it had enough information to suit everyone's needs so this is the second video you can look at both of them I'll tag that one in the bottom of the description of this video so you can see it that's three whoops I forgot the pearl front part pearl front pearl front pearl back that's three right nope that's four so we should have one and then one two three four and then a knit one now we're going to be in our back cable section and we have 32 stitches there right it said to do 32 yes and our back cable that I'm going to do back cable C it requires 22 stitches across here and we're going to increase eight sti uh, one two through six stitches across here as pearl front and backs but we need 22 to start with and we have 32 so that means that we have five stitches on either side that are extra so we can center it by working over five stitches we'll work the five stitches and we're going to place a marker there for the cable one two three and I'm purling these because on the right side of the work they should be knits and then we're going to put a pink marker here to denote that it's the cable my other markers are gold colored so we know this is the cable marker and then I'm going to knit two purl front and back knit two I'm just going to follow this row here follow these directions so I'll be increasing six stitches as I go across purl front and back knit two purl front and back knit four these are tight because I'm making all of these increases my knitting is not tight it looks like it is but it's because I'm making so many increases and then we have two increases back to back pearl front and back and then a knit four pearl front and back knit two pearl front and back knit two and we should have five stitches remaining correct let's count and see if we do one two three four five yes so we're going to put our second pink marker there to denote this side of the cable section and we'll knit the last five then we're going to work our sleeve cable again because we're on a wrong side row we're not making any increases for the raglans we're just setting up for our cables and I need to I have one two three four five six and we have six stitches here so I'm going to knit one and then I purl front and back four times in a row one two three four and then there should be one left before the marker and there is and that's going to be a knit slip the marker and we're purling the first stitch because it's a knit on the right side row so we've now done our setup row for the cables 
So let's look and see. We have still have that one center stitch. Then we have, uh, instead of six here, we have ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Then we've got our five between uh, the uh, raglan marker and the cable marker. We have our cable set up, which is 22 plus 6, there's 28. Then we have the other cable marker, the five plain back stitches before the raglan, our gold raglan marker, 10 stitches, a raglan marker, and one stitch. So now we're ready to do the first right side row. If we go to page 80, which is where our directions start for the v-neck cardigan for size 38 and coming down to five stitches to the inch it says we're going to increase according to this increase round zero times so we just skip that we don't need to do that we're going to skip right down to here size 38 we're going to increase eight stitches every second round which means every right side row for the following number of times 22 times. Now we do the increases just like it tells us here. You can read this here. I'm going to do mine with a one knit stitch in between. So I'm. It, you can choose whichever increase you want to use. I have these in the handout. I have a sample of each type of the increase and what the raglan increase will look like if you use it. I'm going to use the one where you work a make one right, knit one, make one left. And I'll have to do that 22 times at every raglan marker. Then I need to keep in mind that when I get over to here, it says at the same time, beginning with the second right side row, we're going to do the v-neck. So we don't need to worry about that till the second right side row. So I'm going to start right up with the first right side row. I'm going to be making increases of my choice at every raglan marker. That's just the gold markers. There's four gold markers, so I'll be making eight increases. There's two increases at each marker. The first one is right here. Now when I choose the style of increase that I chose, which is make one right, knit one, make one left, I'm going to use the knit stitch from the sleeve. So it'll be make one right, slip the marker, knit one, make one left, work across the cable sleeve, then I'm going to make one left, knit one, slip the marker, I mean make one right, slip, uh, knit one, slip the marker, make one left. So here we go. We'll work across the row. So here I'm going to make a make one right. When you make a make one right, you bring the yarn up onto the needle, the bar is focused uh, is uh, leaning to the right. Let's get up close and see so you can see this. When I lift the bar up on the needle, it's leaning to the right. And I knit that through the front. That makes a right leaning make one. Slip the marker, knit one. Make one left. Now when I lift it up, it's leaning to the left. Can you see that? That means I have to knit it through the back. Sometimes that's hard to do. I roll my needle over from the front and knit it through the back. Okay, so now I have my first stitch at the end with the center front stitch. I worked a make one right, a knit one, make one left. And that used one stitch from the 10 that I had of my left, on uh, my right sleeve. Nope, this is the left sleeve, left sleeve. So I'm also going to be using this knit one stitch right here for my increase at this rug. And so that leaves me eight stitches in between for working my sleeve cable. If we look at my sleeve cable design, we can see it takes 10 stitches and I only have eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the center eight. I'll leave off number one and number 10. So I'm going to work the center eight, which means I'm going to knit two, purl four, knit two. And this is what you do to work a cable in to an area that is actually too narrow for it when you know that you're going to be making increases rapidly and it will soon fit. We're not going to get too excited about that because it will look just fine. The knit two. Then we're going to make do a make one right. We lift the bar up. It's pointing to the right. We knit it from the front 
Sharp needles really help in doing that. Knit one. Slip the marker. Make one left. And then we're going to knit five. And this number will increase as we add more of the increases to the back over to our cable marker. Here's the cable marker. We slip the cable marker and then I'm going to work the back cable. I'm not going to uh, show that on the video because I think it speaks for itself so I'm going to cut here. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I finished working across the back cable there. We have our first cable crossing there and I'm at the other pink marker which denotes the end of the cable. I'm going to work my five stitches on the back that are remaining before the marker and remember we're going to work the increase it's going to be a right increase a right make one leans to the right slip the marker knit one make one left leans to the left see how it goes to the left and then we're back here where we only have eight stitches so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to knit two, purl four, knit two. I'm leaving off the first and last stitch because they won't fit yet. They will on the next right side row. So it's just this one row we have to leave those out. Now your numbers may be different because I'm doing size 38 with a five stitch. Everyone's numbers will be different but you can see how this is done, how you fit them in. Then we're going to do a make one right, a knit one, slip the marker, make one left, and knit one. Now we're on row three, the second wrong side row. We can see we have two stitches before the first raglan marker, so we're going to purl those. And let's count how many stitches we have between the sleeve markers. So I just passed the marker. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We only need 10 for our sleeve design. It's 10 stitches wide. So we're going to work the first stitch as a purl. So it would be a knit on the right side of the fabric. And then we can start row 3 of our cable pattern which will be a knit, purl 2, knit 4, purl 2, knit 1. So knit 1, purl 2, knit 4, purl 2, and you could put markers there if you wanted to now. So you would put a marker right here inside one stitch inside that and one in here and that will demark your cable area if you would like to. So now you can see on the next right side row there will be plenty of stitches to work this cable. I'm going to continue across this row to the end and then we'll start up with the second right side row or row four. Be back in just a minute. Here we are back at finishing the wrong side row and we're ready to start row four. We can already see a little bit of a pattern forming here. We can see the beginning of our cable pattern here for the sleeve. This is between the two uh, raglan markers for the uh, right side. This is the cable marker for the back. Here's the back cable starting. We've got a little twist right there at the start. Here's our other cable marker. This is continuing across the back. This is our left sleeve and the beginning of the cable there and our left front. So we're ready to do the next right side row. And that is where it says at the same time beginning with the second right side row, that's where, right where we are, shape the v-neck by using the method of your choice to increase one stitch at each center front. It says center front. That's not the same thing as what it said over here for placing the markers where, it's, where it says 
after the right front. On page 75, it says right front. That is the first gold marker. The center front is this first stitch. It's not a marker, it's a stitch. So this is the center front. And every fourth row, for four times, we're going to make an increase after that first stitch and right before the last stitch. And this will be the V-neck, and it happens at the same time. So we have two increases at this raglan marker, two increases at this raglan marker, two at this raglan, raglan marker, and two at this raglan marker. That's eight increases plus one v-neck increase here and one v-neck increase here. So for the next four, every other right side rows will be making 10 increases just on the every other right side row, which means every fourth row, and we'll do that four times. Of course, the numbers vary for the sizes, but you'll get the idea. Now let's look at this a little bit more. All of these in these two charts right here are your v-neck increases. For the size I've chosen, size 38, with a stitch gauge of 5, I need to make 4 every other right side row. Then I need to make another 11 on every right side row for a total of 15 increases. Because we're using a wider front button band, ours is going to be 3 inches wide, we're subtracting one inch of stitches from these increases. So in order to subtract an inch, we would subtract that number of increases. One inch is five stitches, so we would subtract five from this 11, which gives us six. If we add six to four, we have 10. So if we want to use this particular cable because it has 11 increases and we only have room for 10, we're going to go ahead and use it as 11. It will give us one extra stitch on our front, which is insignificant. Now if we look at this the way we're looking, if you look down at your body and you see the left, your left front looking down at your chest, this is your left front. This is your neckline right here. You're going to work. This is the beginning of the row. This is row one. It corresponds to row four with the rest of our um, charts. But This is the first row of this cable. We start here. We knit one, make one. And then we continue with our sweater on the needle until we get all... This is all the rest of the work is in between here and here. All those stitches that are on our needle. When we get to where there's one stitch left on the other needle, we make one right and knit one. And we follow the directions for this, and it will fill our cable in. Now notice, after you've made all the increases, that you end up with a column of two knits. These are the very center front of your sweater. And in between those two columns of knits is where we're going to be picking up for our front button band. So that gives us two stitches to pick up between and leaves us with a nice design for our cable. So I'm going to be starting that right now because in our directions for my size I need to start it on this row. So I'm going to follow this chart and I'm going to knit one I'm going to make one left. These are directionals. Make one left here, make one right here. I'm going to make one left. I prefer to make my increases leaning away from the marker or away from the edge. So the edge is on the right, so you make a make one left. And then we're going to knit one. And now we're going to make our raglan markers, which is knit one left, because it leans away from the marker. I mean knit one right. Get back on there. Knit one right. Slip the marker. Knit one make one left. And we can see that we're right at our cable design right now. So here's our front cable design. We're ready to do row four. These row numbers do not have to correspond, but you can see any number that's on the right side represents a right side row. The numbers on the left represent a wrong side row. We're on row four up here. We're ready to do the cable crossing. So we have a purl one, and then we have a two over two left cross with pearls. 
That means we're going to purl these two stitches. We're going to knit these. And then we're going to have a 2 over 2 right cross with purls. These two come in front. I have videos on working cables without cable needles. If you learn how to do that, you'll be very thankful that you did. It saves so much time and messing around. And then we have our knit, our purl one into the cable design, just in time to make our make one right. Knit one, slip the marker, make one left. Now this is just the increases that I've chosen to do for this sample. You can use any increases that you choose. Now I'm working across the back. So that's how you start the front. That's how you get the cable to fit into the sleeve when there's not enough stitches. How you start the back cable, etc. I hope this helps you get started. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up, share them with your friends, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll put a link to the tutorial down in the description of this video. I'll also put a link to cabling without a cable needle and to all the other videos that are associated with this tutorial. So happy knitting. I hope this helps you get started. Mm -hmm.